anything important yet. Okay, here we are. So I'll keep dropping that in the chat. But um, as you all know, because you signed up for it, today we're talking about online tools discovered this year. And I said this in the email and in the description, but just to be clear, or tools that you're using really heavily, right? That has helped you convert stuff to virtual, engage people virtually, work from home um, for a little, you know, for the time and all the things. So it's really open. Um, so just a couple of like, uh, Kind of getting started things and as people come in late i'll like re-explain it this is a very casual session um, amongst friends is that um we're going to be talking about this stuff and i dropped this link in the chat and i'll drop it again but it's an editable link and i set it up where it's like a template where you can just duplicate a slide or take one i put some like blank ones in there with what we're really kind of going to be talking about today and for y'all to insert tools so i put in like three or four tools to start with as people might be adding it um, but you know i really want to hear from people if they have things um, so uh, just a couple of disclaimers. Um, I'm sure people have heard me talk about this, but UNCG does have a click wrap, wrap process. And what that is, is that anytime you sign up for an instructional technology tool or an online tool using an email address, right? And then you're like clicking that button that says, I agree to your terms of service. Technically UNCG legal has to approve that. They have to go in and look at that terms of service and say, yay or nay. Um, what does that mean? It just means that ITS will not support anything that's not click wrap. So a lot of the tools we're talking today are not, right? So like, if you don't put in a six tech ticket, don't go to air it and ask, you know, for things because they can't support all the things out there, especially with how things come and go in terms of these like free online tools. Um, you can use these tools um, with your UNCG email address, but at your own risk. So, um, of course, I would advise anyone when you're clicking on that, I agree to the terms of use, particularly if you're using them with student and having students put in data like names or email addresses, if you're doing that, um, just to be cautious and read through that and think about how the data is being shared and where it's being stored. Um, so that's kind of disclaimer to all of this. So the way we have these is I have like slides that just basically insert stuff about these free instructional tech tools. So again, I think most of us are really familiar with Google Slides, but just to make sure we're on the same page, you just right click on the slide in the editable link, and it can say duplicate slide. Um, please don't write over other people's work. Um, I usually don't have an issue with this. Um, but uh, in case it comes up. Um, and if you don't feel comfortable, you're welcome to chat me either privately or just put information in the chat and I can insert it for you while you're talking about or sharing. Um, you're welcome to share out about the tool. I encourage it because you know y'all are the ones using them. But if you don't want to, that's totally fine as well. You just let me know and I can go click on it. I'm also happy to make anyone a host where if they want to show something, demo something, that's fine as well. So here's the slide. You're just going to right click Duplicate side. Um, I did also put some blank ones in there if you wanted to just start filling them out. Um, just make sure you leave like one or two blank ones. Um, and there we go. So hopefully people are kind of doing it in the background. Did anyone come in late where I need to put in the link again? I'm opening up the chat. Here it is again, if you came in while I was even the spiel. And this is an editable link, which means you can go in, start adding stuff. Um, duplicate slides, add in stuff as well. Um, so as people are doing that in the background um, to give people time, um, you can just go in here and do it. I'm going to go in and start presenting on stuff. Um, or if Rachel, you want to go first, I see Jamboard on here. Do you want to talk about Jamboard? Yeah, sure. I can do that. Sorry, I was trying to unmute. Um, so I went to the lovely ACRL distance online learning section poster presentations today and I feel really good about a lot of stuff that I've seen there to be honest it's been one of the more like encouraging days of pandemic work because there's a lot of cool stuff um but this one person used Jamboard in what I thought was just kind of a neat way in his class so if you want to click on that um I did not create this this is someone's thing that they made um and so this was like as students were coming in uh, to the room and I think you could do this virtually or in person he was saying this is like his setup there's him his emojis his contact just like something for them to do while they're getting started you add a sticky note and share the topic 
that you think you might be researching. So if you go to the next one, um, he then like used it. Um, he took those different topics as people were putting them in, or he said you could solicit them from the instructor ahead of time. And then together they came up with um, these different keywords or search strategies. And the article citations one, they didn't necessarily explain it, but I think that you could potentially come back to this and say, okay, you know, we're going to work in teams like this breakout room, you're going to work on this page of the Jamboard and like find some articles related to this using these search terms. Um, and if you keep going, I feel like a little bit more, try the, try the next one. Sorry, I should have written down the number. I feel like he does something else toward the end and I could be really wrong about that. Okay, I guess not. Um, but I felt like I could be mixing it up with some other Jamboard presentations that I've seen, but like just, it's just kind of a cool collaborative thing. Um, I'm really annoyed with myself that I, I saw another one. If I find it while we're talking, I'll drop it in. But this was just kind of a neat way to get people engaged with Jamboard. You have to have a Google account to set it up, but you don't have to have a Google account to contribute to one. Um, and you can do, I think it's set up to 50 people um, at a time on a single Jamboard and up to 25 slides, which is more than I think I would ever need. I think this could be a really cool substitute for the hyperdocs thing that I used to be way into um, because it is just like everything in one place. There's no like clicking around to different documents. So I'm sure, you know, I don't know. I just think of Jamboard as like an improvement on Padlet basically, and you can download them. So that was it really. I just thought that was really cool. Looking here where we could, um, and I'll drop a link in the chat, um, where you could make a copy of this and use it in your own instruction and put in your own stuff. Um, I'm going to look and see if I can find that other thing I was talking about. Giving this person credit would probably be the polite thing to do. Um, yeah. Jason Wardell. Wardell. Um, but yeah, this is really cool. Thank you. So let me look. Um, I've used Jamboard a little bit. Um, but nothing like that fancy. And I really like it because I think we could use it um, asynchronously too. Um, yeah. I could use it asynchronously with my ACRL presentation um, just to break things up and was like, what's your takeaway from this session? Um, but one of the things that was hard about asynchronous is that I had two Jamboard slides um, and I sort of verbally said that during my presentation, but when people are just on there by themselves, I don't think they always realize there are there's that click forward thing. So if you're using it during like instruction, it's a lot easier because you can just be like, all right, click through to the one you want. I remember one of the data candidates used this and I was like, they're using it a lot better <laughs> than I have ever used it. I was like, take note, because like Mentimeter, which I use a lot, has like that two slide limit. You know what I mean? So like I've never used it to do like a keyword creation. And I like this a lot better than um, I've used a answer garden in the past because I like that it's embeddable in a libguide. Um, but it's like pretty lightweight, you know, like you can't do stuff like this for like moving around and have like article citations. So I really like this example. Um, I think someone might have entered, we are just adding tools to this editable Google slide deck and then sharing our experiences with them. Um, and it can be a tool that you found in the pandemic or you've seen used in like a virtual conference or a virtual session or seen used and you want, you think it's cool, something you've been using a lot to help you work from home um, and more. So uh, there it is in the chat again, if you've entered. Okay. Um, well, I'll do one. So Erin Lorimore showed this to me to give her um, credit. And I think she saw it used in a um, SAA, a Society of American Archivists, right? A uh, virtual like breakout room deal, but it's this tool called Wonder. And I think I shared it with like ROI. 
Um, but what it is, it's a virtual space built around topical hubs. And then you can like hop from hub to hub to hub um, while you're in it. So it's kind of um, cool. If you want to learn, see it like in action, like with a lot of people moving around in this virtual hub area, you can do it. But basically it's a virtual space, but you drag your icon around, right? And then like you could have a room that maybe says like, um, public libraries, right? And then you could drag yourself into them and be like, I'm interested in public libraries. And then you would see everyone who's in the public library room. And then you'd be hooked into a virtual meeting room with those people. Um, you can then lock the room or not, leave it open for people to join you. Again, it's a, it's a way to kind of replicate a big room um, in, uh, in the virtual world. Um, so I haven't used it for like an actual application, but I feel like this tool came about in the pandemic based on that conferences moved online, right? Professional development all moved online and tried to replicate this idea of moving around. So I was wondering if anyone has used it or had um, experience with something like this. Um, I don't think you even have to sign in. So maybe I can just show you the room. Yeah, so Steve said it uh, would be try to uh, would be fun to try this with a UL group. I agree. It could be like a social event room, you know, you could have like categories. So like a uh, jam session is, is, a, is a, the name. We'll call it UL, UL VLC. Um, I feel like I've already done this. So is it just gonna be like, So here it is. It's gonna give me a tour. Can y'all see? Y'all can see this, right? I don't think it should should make a difference that I'm in Zoom. Oh, it wonder can't. I think it's because I'm in Zoom. But in a real wonder room, if I wasn't in Zoom, it would access my microphone, and my camera, right? And then I could float around. It would ask me to take a picture, and then uh, I would uh, see in the background. You know, it would you would see me how I'm looking that day um, and then just get going. You can create them on the fly and I don't think it makes any kind of like account to do it. So if any of y'all see anything cool like that done in any of these virtual professional development conferences? I've really only seen people use Zoom and use the breakout rooms. Um, yeah. This is a like cool idea though. Kind of an alternative. Whatever the platform was they had for ACRL, I don't know what was actually behind the scenes there. Um, but they did some sort of events, but it was pretty similar to Zoom. Yes. You're using Whova for NCLA. Yeah, so that distance library conference I went to in November, I think, November 2020, um, used Whova. And we had, it was great. I liked Whova, yeah. It's good. It just allow, I liked it a little bit better than how ACRL did it because they just allow you to basically integrate Zoom rooms and then have the conference things and it integrates with like a schedule. So I don't know if y'all are using it in place of Sketch, but like it's like Sketch, but more built for the virtual conference world where it hooks to these Zoom rooms. Yeah, I'm not entirely sure just yet, um, like what we're gonna do, but it looks cool. And Hoover costs money, right? Yeah, we have a, we're using it for 2023 as well, even if things oh, aren't wow. virtual, so. I think it's really useful, even for in-person conferences, because it gives you like a storage platform, right? To like put yeah. the presentation. There's a, there's a lot you can do for sure. It has a lot of community building purposes. Mm -hmm. And it's interesting that when you like, including like the option to um, have prizes, right, to have points for your engagement, which some of which drives Huba's business model, I've noticed, like you get a lot of points for recommending conferences to it uh, or to others. But yeah, it's a nice, it's, I don't, I don't think, Rachel, there's a virtual reality gathering component to it. It's not that kind of software, but it does enable a lot of conversations, including for people that don't necessarily want to speak up in a big group in Zoom. So it's a nice, um, 
Yeah, we're gonna come for. Sorry, just uh, welcoming is like I was talking to a librarian who's who outed herself as being very shy. She would like she likes that interface because it lets her communicate without having to burst up out into a big group like you often do at an online conference. And I've like ranted about this, I think to Jenny and probably to other people in this, but like, I hope that even as we shift into like, you know, more people getting vaccinated and being able to do physical things, physical, you know, like in-person things again, I hope that like the online stuff doesn't completely go away. Cause I think there's a lot of like accessibility components that um, come with online professional development. Um, like when you think about like, if you're a caregiver or, you know, like I have friends who are single parents or caregivers and like they can't ever go to conferences because they can't get, um, you know, help in that uh, arena. So I hope that at least it continues to be somewhat hybrid and that like some professional development things. I totally get why people want to be uh, together in person. Um, yeah, and so you can't afford to travel. Like there's just tons of things with, with, with in-person conferences that are like not very accessible, not very EDI friendly. Um, and again, like I miss seeing people in person too, <laughs> like for that stuff, but I hope that it like stays hybrid somewhat. Um, so this is a picture of how Wonder looks since I couldn't really demo it because we're in Zoom, but like you can see here, like the little bubbles, the people hanging out, float and you float your, your bubble to different things. So that's Wonder. So H5P is something I've used for a while, but I've gotten a ton of questions about it in the pandemic and we have a library account. So I thought this was a good place to like tell people if you didn't know. Um, the reason we don't publicize it like, you know, fully in Campus Weekly or through like uh, Jackson L Blast is that it is a WordPress plugin because their free version doesn't have um, server space. So we have to find a way to put it on our own servers. But H2IP is HTML5 interaction. So this could be as simple as like a multiple choice, true or false, drag and drop question. Um, but it could also be a full on interactive tutorial as well as interactive videos. Um, there's like hotspot options, tons of different things. And it's very accessible. They pride themselves on being very accessible, even though they have all these different interactions. Um, so if you're interested in it, um, this is a free, the free one. Um, we and the WordPress plugin we use is free, but we have it set up on like a backend account where I can insert them for you. So all you would have to do is like we could meet or you could talk about it and I can guide you through some things. Um, but you can go here to h5p.org and play around with it on your own um, and see what you can do. Um, so they have examples and downloads here. So if you're like, yes, I am interested in seeing what a course presentation is. That's their interactive tutorials. This is what it could look like, right? It goes you through a slide deck like this and then it asks you questions. I don't know. What color do ripe cloudberries have? I'm going to guess. No, I got it wrong. See, it told me. What country has a special section of cloudberry diplomacy in their foreign affairs? I don't know. I got it wrong. It was Sweden. So anyway, y'all get the idea of what it is. Uh, and at the end, it will tell you how much you got right or wrong. Uh, and it does build into Canvas really well. Um, we do use them in our library research tutorials as quick checks. So if you go to any of these and then we'll just pick one, right? You have an intro, but then we ask these kind of quick check questions. Uh, so, and these can be embedded in a libguide, in Canvas, on a website. Um, they have an iframe that's really nice to use. Um, the keyword is the same thing as the search term. I got that one right. So there you go. So that's uh, H5P as something that I've been using a lot in the pandemic. Again, I was using it pre-pandemic. It's just I think um, a lot of libraries were kind of forced to reevaluate their tutorial platforms. Um, in the pandemic and uh, H5P has come up a lot. And since uh, we use it in our platform um, and we use it, um, the WordPress plugin, which is a nice way to use it for free. Um, I was getting a lot of emails about it. Questions, concerns? People love H5P in our tutorials. They do. Yeah, anytime I go to a conference, I get asked a lot of questions. It's cool. I'm glad people are finding it, discovering it. And I just want to know everyone can use it. 
Um, so Lois asks, is it difficult to get the hang of using? No, it's very easy to use. Um, the back end uh, is like just, it guides, it's like, what do you want to name this interaction, right? If you're creating like a multiple choice question or whatever. Um, it's really easy. So if you were interested in trying it, um, if you go to h5p.org, which is linked in that slideshow, you can create an account. Um, you can actually create a, it's totally appropriate to create one with your UNCG account because this is an open source tool, right? Um, they do have a for-profit model that's not open source, but it costs a lot of money and we are not going to buy it. Um, so you just can create a login and then uh, create, start, start saying create. So it will flash messages at you like, this is just a trial, this is just a trial. But if you create it and then send me the package, um, I can upload it onto our WordPress plugin. Um, and, or sometimes what people do is they'll send me like a Google doc of what they want it to look like. And I'll just put it into the WordPress plugin and then send you a link to it or the embed code. It's really easy to use. Even people like me can. So someone, uh, Rachel asked if you can put H5P into a Google slide. No, until, I mean, they have ways that you can embed um, from their products, right? Or if you use one of their Google apps, um, as far as I know, there's no H5P to do that, but they do have other plugins, right? So you like, like, you know, like a uh, pull everywhere can be embedded, Mentimeter, but you just have to get those, uh, like add-ons, they call them Google add-ons, right? So like if you're here in Google Slides, here, add-on. So it just depends. So you could look here and see which ones have come up. I just feel like I said, I don't think H5P has one, but you could look right now. I was thinking about asynchronous, like um, if you were to have people look at a slideshow on their own and then wanted to yeah. add something like that, but you could always do it on a LibGuide. And yeah, you could, they do embed really well on a LibGuide as a widget. Yeah, but you don't get any of the analytics. But remember, we also have LibWizard, um, which does give you analytics, right? And it does allow you to create interactive tutorials. And I can talk about that. Um, I didn't put it on here, but we can talk about it. So Rachel and I were talking today about what she mentioned that ACRL Dole's um, poster session that's going on that is having a lot of good stuff. It's on distance and online learning, but they are doing stuff on teaching and learning, um, management, project management, all kinds of things. I've been sending people links to things like, oh, I thought of you with this. So maybe you'll get an email from me as I like am working through this, all the posters. But a lot of them were using this thing called Gina Lee, Gina Lee, I think that's how you say it, which is just basically a new form of presentation creation. They they call them panels, but they're really presentations. So, um, and they give you all these templates. So um, here is the options. You can do a presentation, learning experience, interactive image. Um, so I have, um, I just created an account today, but if I click on presentation, it's gonna give me all this stuff. And this is what it could look like. So this is what it looks like. This is an example of a presentation. But it embeds really well. It, they embedded it on these web pages and it has all these different ways you can interact with people. Because they call them interactive presentations. Um, see, so like hotspots. And I have not checked the accessibility of this, but it looks pretty. Ooh. I assume I just like assume at this point that everyone is thinking about accessibility so hopefully they're okay but this is it so you can create a free account and start playing around I created mine this morning but I haven't created anything yet but yeah and then there is a paid for version of this I did look at this but with the free version you do get um unlimited um presentations. I think the stuff that comes for paid for is that you can do like so as a student you can get unlimited creations and unlimited view. So with the unlimited free one you can't do you can't download it as a PDF which is I guess important to keep in mind. But I think you can create a link because it says unlimited views can't view it offline. So something to keep in mind, but I'm always like, I feel like, you know, always looking for new templates, always looking for new ways to do presentations. 
So this is another thing I saw at ACRL do uh, that ACRL Dole's thing, where it's another screen recorder through a Chrome extension. I haven't played it yet, but it seems like a nice lightweight thing. Um, sorry, I have like gnats. Um, but um, I'm not going to play this video, but it uh, is a Chrome extension, right, that you can just quickly make recordings and it goes into your, Zoom, uh, your Google Drive as an MP4. Um, I use something called Screencastify sometimes for this, but I thought this might be a um, different one. I'd have to start researching to see if it has more stuff or less stuff. But I'm always looking for like lightweight recording tools. Okay. So, Lois, do you want to talk about Wakelet? I said, I don't know and I'm so sorry. I thought I was copying pasting on my desktop and I didn't. So, <laughs> no. Um, this is a tool that we used in um, my library technology class this mm -hmm. semester. Um, and I, we had to make these little curations. Basically, we had to pick a topic and then find a bunch of resources about it and put it out there for people to find. And I thought this was a really convenient way to do it. Um, the second one is the one that I did for my class. Um, and it's basically just a simple, like, I don't know, like you could use it the same way that you might use to build a website. Um, you could use it for a blog here. I put a bunch of resources together about mindfulness, um, but there are also several different layouts. So there's one that looks more like, um, almost like Pinterest where it's like a bunch of squares that you could click on. Um, there's one that's more of like a gallery view or something like that. So um, there's lots of different options. And what I really liked about it was how easy it was to use. Uh -huh. um, yeah, so <laughs> um, yeah, it was it was super quick and easy and it was just really simple. So if you ever, I thought it might be a good alternative, like if you didn't want to go into Google Sites and build a whole site for something, you could just pop stuff in there and turn it out quickly. Um, it doesn't have the full, obviously, like editability of like a like Wix or something like that, um, but it's just quick, easy. It would be great if you needed students to do a project and put stuff together. Um, yeah, it, it's basically open to whatever you want to use it for. Love it. Um, I'm thinking, I'm like selfishly thinking about like, maybe I could use this to do like, as like almost like a reading journal where I could be like putting stuff if I found it. Um, or yeah, like liaison areas. I'm thinking of this as like, reflection space because I really like how you can embed like music articles or link to you know videos like all the different multimedia stuff I love it podcast yes does anyone else use wakelet Very cool. Okay. Does anyone else have anything to share? I'm trying to think of other things we could talk about. Do people add stuff? What the fuck? No. I feel like I used a lot of things that I was already using during mm -hmm. the but used them in different ways. Mm -hmm. um, so I have talked a lot before about how I use um, Google Docs in my synchronous online classes, um, which is something that I have done to an extent in person. Um, but I do a lot more with it in breakout rooms and Zoom. Um, and was, there was something else I was thinking of that, like, I had used before, but started using, well, I had been using Toggle for a few years as a time tracker, um, but I didn't need to really be consistent with it because, you know, whenever we are in, in the building, we don't necessarily have to, um, 
you know, track our time to the level of detail that we do when we're working from home. So I use that a lot. And actually it's been really helping me recently as I'm writing my annual um, review or my alpha. Um, and there was something else I was thinking of that I have used a lot. Oh, I've used um, Canva a lot more for um, like infographics that I've created for LibGuides and stuff. Now I've been using Canva for a while, um, but I had mostly just used it to like, you know, create nice visuals, but um, I had started using it quite a bit more for um, like infographics that I put on my LibGuides or that I put within library tutorials and things like that. So thank you, Sam. I should have done that, but you did it. And no, I can go in and fill in like URLs. Tog I spelled toggle right. I feel like I always hear like a lot of praise for toggle. Um, I spelled it wrong, but um, never have actually used it. They also actually expanded during the pandemic. Um, they used to just be a time tracker, but now they have a uh, toggle plan, which is more like a um, project management tool. And there's something else. There's a third one that they have now, but toggle track is like the tradish um, one that is just for tracking. And it, again, has really helped me as I have been trying to, uh, you know, wrangle some consults that I didn't remember. So. But you use it, like you said, for time tracking, right? Yes. You use it for project tracking? You can, yeah. That's the newer version toggle plant. There's a, it's like a separate thing, but it's all the same. I don't know how to describe it well. It's like a separate product from the same company, I guess. I think it's really, I feel like I want to start doing it because it would be useful for me to know, right? Like how much time am I spending on tutorials? Like how much time am I spending on this? Yeah, it's, um, it is really helpful. Again, like it's been super helpful for me when putting my alpha together. So I can be like, you will VLC coordination X number of hours or whatever. Cause that's not something I would have ever been able to really do before. I'm having trouble finding Canva's website. I try to avoid these ones that say add. But I, that's it, right? This is Canva. Ugh. Anything else? I'm, I'm curious about what Lois just said in the chat about Canva. Um, if we, could we, do you have an example maybe Lois that we could see? If not, it's no big deal. I'm just curious. Um, I can try to, well, basically all it is is just, um, so like if I say something like, remember to do blah, blah, blah in a screencast, I'll just go on Canva and make a little image that says, you know, like do blah, blah, blah. And then I'll download it as a picture and I'll insert it into the screencast so it pops up. Um, instead of, you know how some screencast tools will have ways that you can just type right on the video. Um, I like doing it that way because you can make it look cuter and more consistent than trying to just use the little in video editing thing. Um, so I think that, that that's been fun. I've had a lot of fun with that. That's genius. I love it. If you have an example video um, that you can think of after, I'd love to see it. That does sound cool. I know that like there is a like profession, there is like we have access to a professional account. Um, but which I think has a lot better like icons whatnot. So um, I don't know if y'all have, I think Holly has access to it. If anyone knows that. 
Yeah, Holly has it. There's a UNCG team um, that you can use. It's premium. Premium. So yeah, I think that they have like better icons, right? That's what I've heard. Yeah, all the like the anything you see when you're browsing through and there's like a little crown next to it, which is a lot of stuff these days is available. Nice. I should probably do that. Cool. I'm trying to think of other stuff I use a lot. I have a comment, Sam, that's yeah. in many ways very similar to what Jenny said, not necessarily looking for new things, but using old things in different ways yeah. or better ways. And efficiency, you know, is, is something I've always tried to pursue. And we all do, I know, in our different ways. But for example, um, I've been very attached to Camtasia to do screencasting. And I like bells and whistles and, and Lois alluded to this, like adding captions and um, transitions and you know, all, the, all the cool special tricks you do to post-process the video. On the other hand, that's sitting on my hard drive at work and I don't have access to it, have none extra except for VR for times to go to work. And so when I had to make some videos, Zoom uh, screencasting, I just use Zoom and just talk through it um, and then upload it to YouTube like I normally do. And doesn't have bells and whistles. On the other hand, I can whip those out fairly quickly, efficiency, and it's and they look fine. It's not fancy, but it works. So that's not very exciting or sexy. But using tools we already have, and at least in my case, different ways to make things easier. And so when I when we have oh, when we as to your point, Sam, have a more hopefully a hybrid work model moving forward, we'll see what happens. But I may have a choice of Camtasia or Zoom, but you know, to just get videos out there quicker and not make each one a three-hour event to make, I might just keep using Zoom, whip them out quickly, put them up, and if they go out of date, it's very easy to replace them. So that's been my one little anecdote of using a, a, a now a common tool in a, a, a less common way, but a way that works better for my current work environment. Yeah, I think this is a good space to talk about that. Like, I think it's similar to how I mentioned, like, I hope that virtual conferences and professional development opportunities don't completely go away because of how more accessible they are. I hope that us being flexible and saying, like, just keep it simple and like show people how it's done and, you know, that kind of thing stays. Um, I think you know, I don't, I can't like cite you articles right now, but I, I've done research in the past on this. And I think students or patrons just really mostly just want to see how it's done. And they like to see personality shine through, you know, in whatever way it is. So like just having, you know, you be like, here's how to get, like I used, a, I created a simple like screen cast when um, links in PubMed weren't going back to UNCG. So of course, like Leah and Megan and I were getting like tons of emails being like, what's going on? So I made a quick like, here's what's going on video, like, you know, that kind of thing. And here's how you can, you know, get around it until we resolve it. And um, I was like, yeah, I'm glad I didn't spend like, I, you know, it took me like 10 minutes. And I, and, you know, another nice thing about that, making simple ones, is that we do have a lot of nice closed captioning tools. You know, you can use Canvas Studio for free and shoot out captions. You can throw something on YouTube and just do the automatic captions, especially for quick videos where in Zoom you're speaking clearly. And now in Zoom, you can even close captions straight from there if that's easier um, and get a transcript from your recording. So, tools are catching up with how often we're using them, which is nice. Like Zoom has gotten a lot better in the year that we have been using it all the time. Here we are in Zoom right now. Yeah, I like the keep it simple approach to tutorials. That's, you know. So Sam, one of the other things that you had said in your description of this is, are people going to stop using? Yes. What are people tired sort of? About? Yeah. So I'm I'm curious. I'll keep sharing my screen in case I need to oh, go to a website. I'm trying to do something I'm tired of. I mean, weirdly, I'm not that tired of Zoom, but I've definitely, I mean, I have Zoom fatigue. Don't we all have Zoom fatigue? But like, also, again, I just still really appreciate 
the accessibility that Zoom has given us. Thank you, Zoom, over the last year. And I hope, I was telling James today, I was like, I'm gonna be mad if I have to trek across campus <laughs> to a like committee meeting, you know, that could have just been on Zoom, uh, even if I'm, you know, if when I'm in my office. So um, I don't think that's going away. Though, again, I've heard the word Zoom fatigue a lot lately, which is real, it's real. I've been taking my dog on a lot of walks. I think it was something I've tried and been like, ugh, I'm not using this ever again. Oh, I have one. Um, I tried using Slido <clears throat> um, for, because- Slido or Slido? Slido, S-L-I-D-O, the polling thing. Yes. There it is. Um, I tried that because y'all know I like my polls. Um, I tried that because I was doing an ACRL um, like webinar and mm -hmm. you know, there were a ton of people signed up. Not as many people showed up as signed up, but there were a lot of people there. And I know that Slido is supposed to be good for larger audiences is sort of how I had heard it described. Um, but it is just not intuitive to me. Um, and I felt like nervous using it, which I usually don't with, you know, like Mentimeter, Socrative, even Answer Garden, which I use sometimes. Um, I think it's, it really only like puts, can, you can do one question at a time. It's easier than Zoom polls. I hate Zoom polls. I hate Zoom polls. I find them extremely hard to just like understand what you're supposed to do. Yeah, I do not like Zoom polls. But I know, I mean, like Amy used this Slido tool um, and really liked it. But yeah, thank you, Steve, because I went back into it recently thinking I would use it at a, in a conference presentation. And I went in there and I was like, how does this even work? So uh, don't, I, that's when I will be trashing, I think. Jenny, I've used it largely in classes and I go in and I copy my existing slidos because it's very similar in terms of like what I want students to input. Uh, so that part is fairly easy, but then yeah, how to just, you know, have the link shared properly, making sure I turn it on properly when it's live and move to the next slide. I always have to like spend five minutes testing it, you know, with a web browser in which I'm not logged in to make it work. So that could be my fault, but that is a bit quirky. I agree. Trying to think of like, even if I've like, not to be like at all mean or anything, but if I've been to a conference and seen someone try to use something and been like, mm, you know, like, I don't like the way this flows. Not that it was their fault, you know, but just like the tool. All right, Sam, I'll bite. Anyone see people use Prezi anymore? Yeah, well, you know, when Catherine used it in her interview, um, I was like, that's so cool how it like embeds in that, like, you know, like how she was like kind of embedded in the presentation, um, but they've changed their model so that basically there's the, there's like no free version that works. Um, Cause this came up in that presentation series I did. I think um, someone asked about, you know, about Prezi and like if it's morphed and their new model is that um, you really have to pay <laughs> for it to integrate with anything. Um, is anyone still using it? So yeah, see, try the demo. Well, that might mean there are a lot less crappy Pre Prezi's out there and people have to pay for it and have to do- So yeah, see, there's going. no- Sorry, that was very snobby, but- yeah. No, but like you can get the $5 one but I think the one that really makes it at all worth it is the $15 one um, where you can do a free trial. But like, I guess my thing to be like, look, kind of questioning their business model, which you, you would know much more about than me, Steve, is that like, there's so many free presentation tools out there. Like, why would I pay? 50? Like, you'd have to really convince me to spend $15 a month or to convince UNCG to buy an institutional license. Like, I don't think they have enough stuff that's better than PowerPoint or Google Slides, you know, that we get for free as a UNCG employee or anyone can get Google Slides for free um, with, a, with a Gmail account. So I don't know, I don't know what they're doing. So. Marilyn had a chat message about it too. So yeah, Marilyn says, since Prezi is restricted, I quit using it. They do have some free trainings, which give you good ideas on a good presentation. Yeah, I think I 
still link, they have a blog post on like graphic design basics that I still use. I mean, I think they do some good stuff about, you know, graphic design, like best tips of a presentation. But yeah, I mean, I just am like, I don't know. I wonder how many people are paying this $15 a month um, deal. Though they do have a business version where like, so UNCG could buy um, an institutional, like, well, that's not right, but somewhere they have an institutional license, I'm sure. That's how most of these tech companies, I think, make their money or institution, like UNCG buying into Prezi, not like one person buying into Prezi. Um, and a lot of them actually run on the black and try to get bought out. And that's, you know, their exit strategy. So you get a lot of that too. That may not be sustainable. Yeah. You don't need to be because you can be a bad company and still get sold out and make a lot of money for the stockholders. And then they're done. And then they go on to make something else new. Yeah, I bet that's a good point. I think that's probably what will happen. I don't think Zoom's going away. I don't think um, even WebEx, like some companies are still buying into that. Can't be a monopoly, right? Um, so Jenny pointed out that um, YouTube channel, which is cool if you're into productivity, countering, note-taking software. Yes. So good job. I'll have to watch that later. Yeah, the channel is called Keep Productive. And like, again, I've said this before in other sessions related to productivity, I'm not in any way suggesting that people need to be more productive, but like, I'm just interested in those kind of tools. And one of the things I really like on that channel is that a lot of, um, in a lot of the videos, they are showing, like, they're just showing you how they use a tool. Um, and I find that a lot more useful than like, you know, if, if I were to go into Prezi and watch a video about how they, um, about how it works, it would just be, you know, whatever they're saying and showing you. But like when I can see like an actual person and how they've set up their workflow in a tool, I find that like super, um, I don't know. I find that like really interesting in, in a nerdy way. Yeah, I, and this has nothing to do with like what Jenny said. Like, I don't think people need to be more productive or anything right now, but, and this is just me personally, like, you know, I'm not expecting people to be like, yes, me when I say this, but I feel like I've kind of hit a productivity wall. Like I was doing really good at like note-taking, um, Panda planners, calendars, um, all these different things. And Right now, like all of it's been put in my desk. I don't know what's going on with my brain. Um, I, it's probably a conversation I should have with like my therapist <laughs> and not with y'all, but I don't know. I don't know if anyone else is gonna hit that. And it might be because it's like the end of the semester, my instruction's done, um, you know, in terms of like my liaison areas. So I'm kind of now starting to think through like, what are my big summer projects with online learning um, kind of deal. Um, so yeah, maybe I, I was thinking today, I'm going to sit down and make like a good to-do list and like think through my next steps and think through the timeline. But yeah, a little burnt out of that. But again, that's just me. Jenny's always so amazing um, at planning that, uh, yeah, I go to her for questions too. And Rachel is very organized, um, especially with all things Google, but also you're just very organized in general. Um, thanks, Lois, for coming. So it's 3.50, but um, I think we've, you know, I'm trying to, I'm just like, I should have come in, I guess, prepared to be like, what is something that I'm absolutely never going to use again? But we'll see. I'll think about it. Hmm. I don't ever use PowerPoint. I will say that. Um, One thing I witnessed is often people try to show slides via Zoom using PowerPoint, something goes wrong. Um, either, and particularly they have two screens going on. So I, yeah. I, I don't use PowerPoint much either. Sometimes I do, more so in my credit class than like instru one shot instruction. But I save my p slides as PDFs and I share my screen using PDFs because that's just such a safe way to do it. And may not, you know, doesn't support animation, but I don't use animation anyway. Um, so it, it's interesting when people are getting ready to show PowerPoint slides. And I always wonder, what are the chances are that something's going to go wrong and they're not going to be able to see something, or they're going to be stuck in the edit mode? And it, usually it's a pretty high percentage. So 
And that I think that's also like a strategy. I think that's also part of my bias of Prezi, because when I was in graduate school, which was a while ago now, um, Prezi was new and students kept trying to use it um, to, for like course presentations and it like never worked. It was always like a five or 10 minute ordeal of like not being able to get the link up, they panic, they're like, oh no, you know? And so I guess like in my mind, I've always had this kind of bias against Prezi because I'm like, oh, is it unreliable? <laughs> like librarians can never get it to work. And then I remember there was a period where I was like, oh, it's gotten a lot better. But, um, and then they, they just kept changing their, their pricing plan. So um, yeah, Prezi. Um, well, this slideshow will go out to you all for coming, and it can be linked on the ULBLC uh, LibGuide. Um, Jenny, is there another one coming up? Um, I can pull up the guide. Yeah, so stay tuned for more information. There are actually going to be three sessions next week, um, which is um more than we have done in a while but two of them don't have all their details up yet but i will tell you that um on monday the third we have a great session planned with david gwen where he's going to be introducing us to the new gateway.uncg.edu platform which is looking really good um we will also have a session on tuesday and it's not even on the calendar yet a session on wednesday but i am waiting to get details about that. And then Sam emailed me earlier today, we are going to have um, a session later in May about that's going to be kind of a like share outs wrap up from the uh, UNCG adapt conference. Yeah, there's still time to register if y'all want to go. Yes, I thought adapt was really great last year. Um, and they have some cool sessions planned this year. Um, and this is something that's basically run by UTLC. Is that accurate? Yeah. So so, I mean, well, I'm not, it's yeah. a representative from the UTLC, the libraries, me, um, ITS, uh, an academic ITC, and UNCG online. But it was born from the UTLC, and I still think they're the main uh, contact for it. Um, but there is this year a research track, but like for y'all, <laughs> You're probably going to be more interested in the other stuff because the research track is really just about, um, you know, stuff that we all do in our jobs. So, um, but uh, the other stuff that, you know, of course, anyone can go to are going to be on joy of teaching, beginning technology, advanced technology, and EDI. There's some, and there's some really good ones in all tracks. Um, I did not make this website up, but let me. Um, no, don't add it to my calendar. Where is it? Sched I clicked on schedule. Mm, schedule at a glance. Perfect. Um, but anyway, and you can sign up, register for the conference, and go to what you want to, because they'll all be recorded and you'll be put in a Canvas org. And then there's posters in the Canvas org, um, discussions. Um, so, like, you can see here the tracks, but they'll have stuff on Canvas, Google, um, EDI stuff, people, things that people have tried and done in the pandemic that they've liked, and so on and so on. You can see Catherine's going to do one. Sometimes my name's on a lot of these, but really I'm just there to be like, here's Catherine. Um, so don't think I'm actually doing this much presentation. Um, Rachel, if, she, if she's still here, there's one on um, from Paul Sylvia and Heather Coleman on um, writing from home because for her for the writing group and yeah citation management and it's going to do some stuff on skullcom anyway um well thank you all for coming thank you sam thank you all for attending and uh we'll see you uh in the next ulblc we hope bye, bye.